Professional Staff podcast with Christy and Nick, made by professional staff for all Swinburne staff. Well, hello there. My name is Christy Horn, and I am one half of this podcasting duo. And I hope you're having a great day today. It's the end of the week. It's Friday. So that is an absolute bonus. But before we crack on with this next excellent episode, it is my absolute pleasure to welcome to the mic the delightful and the wonderful Nicola Howard. Hello, it's great to be here and uh, thanks, thanks Christy for the wonderful welcome and uh, hello to our wonderful listeners. Um, thank you for all our well wishes and also for the for my first podcast. I really appreciate all the support and love and enjoyed getting out of my comfort zone and, and all the downloads have been such um, a great um, joy to see that so many people wanted to listen to what we had to say and uh, we've got such a great bunch of loyal listeners and loads of new ones so thank you to everyone for making me feel so welcome mm-hmm. just- so lovely isn't it it was really heartwarming to see all of those beautiful comments and all across LinkedIn and throughout Swinburne as well so really really beautifully said yeah, thank you. And, um, you know, I'm obviously riding on your coattails that you've been doing it for such a long time. So thank you for being such a great uh, co-host and for being so supportive. Um, now, I know that you haven't been very well. So when I say, how have you been going and what's your news, Christy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll get to that in a sec, but I just really wanted to say that was really beautifully said, Nick. And after analysing our downloads, which has been which has been fantastic, so really congratulations to you. Um, but you know what? I want to say thank you to the amazing team at the library, Nis and Louise, who help us on every single episode. Um, and do you know what? They've now shared this podcast on Apple Podcasts and we now feature on the Swinburne Commons YouTube channel. So a massive shout out to those legends who are so, so helpful. They, they share the pod more broadly for us and it's really boosted our numbers. Um, uh, hang on, no, you really boosted our numbers. What's well, got nothing to do with the library? <laughs> <laughs> but it was. Um, I'm so glad that you're here, Nick. Your your first episode was absolutely epic. You totally nailed it, and I'm really pleased you didn't run a mile because there's no leaving now. All right, so you're stuck. You are stuck, but you're right. I took a week off in July and took advantage of the recharge. Um, annual leave. Yeah, so which I thought was an awesome idea. So thank you, Swinburne. I got a couple of days back. Um, so that was with the aim of staying up late every single night to watch Tour de France because you know how much I love the cycling. Okay. And then I got full blown flu bronchitis, so which was totally gross, and I was off for three weeks. So I'm back now, baby. I'm ready to roll, and I'm here. Right? Excellent. And I'm so glad that you're feeling better. And I just felt so bad for you. And you know, it didn't even correspond with the Olympics, so. You know, you couldn't even stay in bed and watch the reruns of that. Christy, so why don't we introduce our guests to the mic so that they can tell us all about Pride Week and what Swinburne has planned. Great idea, Nick. Welcome to the Swinburne Professional Staff Podcast, Steph Antonopoulos and Max Holden. It's great to finally both have you here on this special episode. Woo, hello. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe this day has finally come. We've talked about this so many times. We did, didn't we? And I'm really, we're so grateful that you're here. And um, yeah, thank you so much for joining us. Great to be here. Yeah, Yeah, my growth. So perhaps you can both introduce yourself by sharing your name and pronouns and your role at Swinburne and how long you have both been here. Mm -hmm. Max, do you want to go first? I was just going to ask you to go first. (laughs) Isn't that lovely? (laughs) Um, I can go quickly. Um, uh, my name is Max. I uh, use he or they pronouns. Um, and I've been a swimmer for about three and a half years. I've had a few different roles, but where I'm at at the moment is the deputy director of media and external communications within our um, media and communications team within the broader marketing team. Um, and uh, I'm also the co-convener of the Swimman Alman Network. Ooh, That's over to you. Good. Okay, so I'm Steph. I use she and they pronouns. I have worked at Swinburne now for about two and a half years. 
the first two years in a very different role to the one I'm in now. Um, so I did work in student admin. So that's how I already knew Nicola Howard quite well. Um, and now I work in the office of the deputy vice chancellor for Triple E, which as everyone will know is education experience and employability. So my role is predominantly on uh, the student experience and making sure that our students feel the best equipped they can be for their studies. Um, I'm also the chair of the Ally Network. Uh, I have uh, led this um, amazing team and committee uh, for, this is my third Pride Week now, um, but for, yeah, just shy of two years now. So, yes, that's me. Steph mentioned there that we did work together in student admin and as she's, you know, moved from the library over to SBS and uh, I was right here. So now, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we were neighbours and now we It only took six yeah, months for you to yeah, come and join right. me in the SBS building so that we yeah. could add a bit of banter there as well. That's right. I had to find you. Yeah. Uh, but it's been sure. nice to be your neighbour again, so that's great. And I've yeah. just recently been doing some work with Max on my new project, so it's been great to both to talk to you both um, professionally within the role, but also through the program. So um, mm. it's a great thrill to be today. So maybe you can explain for people that may be new to Swinburne what the Ally Network is. Want me to go first, Steph? Yeah. Sure. Well, the Ally Network really is about being about visibility. So it's a visible network of staff and students who support Swinburne's commitment to creating an inclusive and respectful, safe university environment um, for people of diverse sexes, sexualities, gender identities, family and, and relationship status. So it's really about championing LGBTQIA plus inclusion across the whole university um, and really promoting a broader and deeper understanding of some of the issues that um, face individuals who are part of um, the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, it's really an opportunity for sort of staff, students and and the broader swimmer community as well to to come together um and really work towards that goal of creating a an environment here at Swinburne that's you know safe um and that people are able to be free from discrimination bullying harassment and really just be themselves and bring their them their full selves um to work and yeah you would add Seth yeah I think you articulated it so well Another thing that's, you know, really important to kind of articulate who we are is that the word ally sometimes gets a little bit thrown around um, in community. And a lot of people at Swinburne have sort of asked this question of both of us, actually, um, you know, what does the ally network mean? Why is it called the ally network and not the LGBTQIA plus mm -hmm. network or the queer network? Well, the reason for the word ally now, a caveat here is that Ally Network was named before both of us came on board, but mm -hmm. we didn't change the name because we really believe that the word ally is to represent both our heterosexual cisgendered allies, so not LGBTQIA plus community members, but also it represents us as community as well who are allies to each other because LGBTQIA plus includes a whole spectrum of different types of people. And, you know, we all serve as active allies to each other every day. So with that in mind, you know, the word ally really is the best way to encompass everyone that this network is for. It's a great explanation. And now that you've said that, <clears throat> excuse me, it, that totally makes sense. Yeah. Can you explain what are some of the initiatives of the Ally, ally Network? Yes. Well, um, late last year, we got together after Pride Week and we thought, okay, great. 2023 was an incredible year for us as a network. It saw exponential growth in um, engagement, both on a staff and a student level. Our memberships just skyrocketed. You know, we had a big committee and we had all these wonderful ideas and we thought, okay, how can we get together and make this really tangible and actionable and, you know, wrap it up in that one Swinburne philosophy of being future-focused, engaged, empowered, Oh, what am I missing? There's accountable, accountable, accountable. Oh gosh, it's the most important one, isn't it? Um, so we got together late last year in October and we started plotting out what we call our Ally Network Roadmap. Now that was a plan that we put in place for the next two years. So it was to include this year of 24 and next year of 25. So by the end of 25, there's certain, you know, benchmarks that we hope to achieve. 
So the initiatives of Ally Network all have to follow these pillars that we outline in our in our roadmap. And I can link that for the show notes for the listeners as well so they can have a look. Great. But basically, um, there's a few different pillars that we hold ourselves accountable to. And um, one of the key things we identified as a network and a committee was that we needed to offer more prominent peer support for LGBTQIA+. So that looks like, you know, having a space that people can meet up in or, um, you know, having regularly scheduled events that LGBTQIA plus folks can go to, to chat with each other, to connect, to engage and to talk about what might be bothering them or, you know, just offering a, a, a supportive ear to listen and chat. Uh, what other initiatives would you mention, Matt? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, like you said, community building is really, really important to us and having that opportunity for um, the LGBTQIA plus community here at Swinburne plus their allies to really come together is such an important starting point as we know with any um, community action that those touch points really, they inspire um, as well as, you know, give you energy towards um, some of the really tough things. Uh, not only that happen um, as a collective, but also as individuals that um, the challenges that, you know, we face in our everyday lives. I think one thing that we're really excited about is really pushing as well towards looking at what we're already doing and even potentially moving towards um, accreditation um, as a, a through the AWEDI. And because I think one thing that we've really identified at Swinburne is people do, we do have a really great culture of um, inclusion um, here at Swinburne, but, and I think sometimes, uh, we don't, um, go ahead to that final step of, you know, maybe identifying all those things that we, we do here at Swinburne and pulling them together. So that will be another one as well. Um, as well as I think, you know, Steph has really been a, a powerhouse of organizing Pride Week and making sure that that really is a landmark event in the calendar. I, one of the things I love about Swinburne is that we do, we dedicate a whole week to pride and it's really special. It's beloved on in the community. When I came here, um, I started during COVID and even during those challenges of COVID, there were still these events pulled together that really made me feel a sense of welcoming and inclusion. And it's really special to do it outside of a time when necess- not necessarily there are pride celebrations. Obviously we connect with where at purple day on the Friday, which is a really important date, especially for a university like ourselves who work with young people all the time. But it's also just really special to have a celebration that sits outside of Pride Month or sits outside of Mardi Gras or Midsummer or any of the other major celebrations. Yeah. Um, because it shows that we really take inclusion um, of the LGBTQI plus community really seriously. So, yeah. That's if I, and yeah. If, I was going to say, if you've touched a little bit about inclusion and some of the ways that Swingman community demonstrate inclusion. Mm-hmm. Are there other things that you think of where you can say that, you know, that is a Swinburne way of working or it's a Swinburne yeah, way that you like to celebrate and or to maybe build on in the future? Yeah, I think that's that's a really good question that you ask, Nicola. Um for me, I've had so many conversations both with our heterosexual allies, but also with LGBTQIA plus folks at Swinburne whether they be students or staff members, constantly chatting with people. And something that really comes up, which we try and exemplify as an inclusive practice, and I'm not just talking about for our own community, but for all marginalised communities that are represented at Swinburne, is um, the behaviour of calling people in rather than calling them out. So that to explain that a little bit further, that kind of um, means that when someone does or says something that probably isn't quite appropriate, rather than saying to them, hey, not cool, actually taking the time to say, hey, you know, um, that thing you said, probably not the best thing, but here's why. And and maybe here's something that you can say instead that is a little bit more inclusive. So really kind of framing it with those kind of curious questioning moments, um, but inviting the person that isn't a exemplifying the appropriate behavior to really be a bit more curious about what is appropriate and how can they, you know, go and and find out how to be a little bit better and more supportive. Um, And, you know, a good example of that is 
we work pretty closely as the ally network. We work really closely with the accessibility network um, because we're really trying for an intersectional approach here at Swinburne. And just making sure that, you know, if we do slip up, it's okay. It's not the end of the world, but just to make sure that we move on pretty quickly and, you know, ask that question, how can I be better every day? How can I show up better to support people? So I guess that's what um, Ally Network's trying to achieve with inclusion here at Swinburne. Yeah. And I think one of the things I would add is it, it sometimes can feel like really frustratingly slow, <laughs> like that, this, this kind of change, like, yeah. um, and that's the nature of working in a large organization like Swinburne for sure. Mm-hmm. But, you know, uh, I even think about how I've seen change, um, here at Swinburne in the last few years, you know, I, there is more visibility on campus of, you know, we've got this great, um, the pro- pride progress flag on the steps. Now there's a, you know, great pride flag on, um, in prominently on John street and looking for more, even more visibility, you know, the usage of pronouns really has increased in a day-to-day basis. And that's enabled by technology on teams that stuff yeah. now used as well as, you know, um, even, uh, on in email signatures and things like that. And those little symbols, I think, you know, there's obviously a skepticism, rightly so of symbolism. Um, and it can't be the be all and end all. But it really is important. And I think you realize certainly having now um, been involved in a few welcome back weeks and orientation weeks, you realize how special it is, especially for um, students who are coming to us from um, international or regional and rural locations where that visibility just doesn't exist. You know, we're a little spoiled yeah. in Melbourne. Um, yeah. Uh, you can, you know, I live in the socialist paradise of Brunswick. <laughs> Um, Same. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the, you know, the students are coming here from places where it may not be safe. Um, or, or legal. It, yeah, yeah. For um, okay. them to express themselves and for them to have those visible signs and to, they're on a learning journey here at mm-hmm. Swinburne in so many ways. Mm-hmm. Um, for us to be able to, um, help facilitate that and introduce people to that. Um, sort of level of inclusion and psychological safety, I think is really, really special. Completely. And I think um, that also needs to come from our senior leadership as well at the university. You know, something that we're really locking in on at the moment is is asking those people from, you know, executive group or any of the senior leaders that have influence with people is to exemplify consistently and show up every day you know, 365 days a year. Matt, Max spoke before about, um, you know, having our Swinburne Pride Week at a time in the year where there might not be too much else going on in terms of LGBTQIA plus Pride. And it's so that we can, you know, plant that seed and remind people, yeah, we're still here. We matter all the time, not just in those big public moments where everyone's looking. And I guess what we're looking for with our senior leadership at the university is to be inclusive leaders, to, you know, really look at, at those intersections of marginalisation and, and not just pick one cause and loudly follow that one cause when everyone's watching, but to quietly follow or, you know, they're, they're allowed to do it loudly, but to follow multiple causes and, and to champion people at all levels. And, um, you know, they will set the tone for everyone else. I know that. With Swimmen's values, actionable engaged, empowered. Look, I don't want to sound like a broken record here, so I'm going to stop, but I can. <laughs> well, that, um, you've both alluded to Pride Week, yeah. and um, so perhaps we can chat a little bit about what Swinburne's got planned for the celebrations for the week. Yeah, and for sure. Perhaps over to you, Steph, to to um, tell us what's going to happen. Yeah, great. Well, um, I was going to ask for a drum roll. <laughs> can we insert a drum roll? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, great. Yes, we can. So, drum roll, please. The theme for this year's Swinburne Pride Week is queer excellence. Now, it's it. look. <laughs> insert applause here. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 very um on the like to the point, and it's something that Max and I came up with sitting in my car one day, driving to campus because we both live in Brunswick. <laughs> um, and we we said, oh my gosh, you know, last year was so incredible. Queer intersections. How do we possibly go one up from that? Like we set ourselves a bit of a task here. 
So queer excellence is where it's at. Um, we're going to be looking at not just inter- intersectionality, but also like the complexities of our identities. And, you know, because we are such a diverse range of people within the LGBTQIA plus umbrella, what are some of the barriers to access that we have on the daily, whether that be through, you know, systemic barriers, things that have uh, been created from culture. So looking at some of those students that Max um, alluded to before that come from overseas or from different backgrounds that, you know, don't have the access that we are so privileged to have here in Australia. So, yeah, that's the theme. Uh, Some of the great activities we've got planned, my goodness. Okay, so it's five days jam-packed. So from Monday 26th of August through to Friday the 30th of August, which is also Wear at Purple Day. And if you're not sure what Wear at Purple Day is, please, folks, go online and have a look. But Monday we have um, a gorgeous little meet-up in the afternoon, which is an afternoon tea and um, a time for our members to get together and have a bit of a chat and just connect and fill up our queer cups before, you know, the big epic week of events. Tuesday morning on the 27th, we have our milestone event for the whole week, which everyone loves. It's everyone's favorite, the official Pride launch and campus march. So that'll be happening on Tuesday morning in the atrium. And then after the speeches, uh, we will line up and do our usual marching through campus. And we'll conclude at the learning circles for a nice group photo. Yeah, that's become a bit of a tradition, the group photo at the end of the march. Great idea. Yeah, thanks. Um, Wednesday, we've got a wonderful, engaging ally training. So that's going to be led by our ally network um, co-leads of training and education. So Joel McGregor and Linus Tan. They are working on co-designing with all the participants in the training, where to next for Ally Network and what do people want to see more of and how do they want us to help them in terms of allyship, what kind of knowledge gaps might there be, um, how can we improve the experience not just in the classroom but outside of the classroom as well. So yeah, the Steph, I might jump in because yeah, yeah, yeah. we got sent some of the questions right before this. Um, oh, my God, amazing. In receiving from some people who are in community or who are also just allies. And it's really great to see people so engaged with how they can take action. I think, you know, um, you may have had this experience before, but often the challenge is that you are well-meaning and excited to support, but don't really know how. Mm. Um, and so we've already seen so many great questions about how to be an active ally, and, you know, what actions you can take in your everyday life and, and just questions of that, you know, uh, in the style of, you can't ask that if you've ever seen that show on the ABC of like, <laughs> uh, oh, we love that one. What? You know, I have this question, but I don't really know how to approach it. So, um, I think that's going to be a really, really great opportunity, especially if you are very engaged with this topic, but you don't really know exactly where to start. So mm. I'm really excited about that event. Yeah. And that one's, um, online. So anyone can attend. Um, we, we kept in mind with our scheduling of Pride Week this year to make sure that our outer campuses were included, but also Swinburne online. You know, we don't want them to feel left behind. Um, so in the spirit of inclusion, we made sure that each day had some element of interaction for, for other people. Um, the Thursday, now I might be biased in saying this, but Thursday, the 29th of August is my personal favorite event. Um, and that's our annual Pride Week discussion panel where we have an incredible lineup of invited panelists. Um, we have a Swinburne student panelist, a Swinburne professional staff panelist, um, a Swinburne alumni, and we have a prominent LGBTQIA plus community member from Melbourne. And we also have an academic who is currently, um, doing their PhD in, um, queer, um, anti-conversion therapies. Oh, sorry, conversion therapies, they will provide the most incredible kind of academic lens on, you know, how this all works and, and what um, what are some of the barriers that we all face uh, to success. So, yeah, that'll be the Thursday. Um, I'm trying my hand at emceeing for the first time, so that'll be interesting. So please come and watch me sail forward. <laughs> Um, and then on the Friday, oh my goodness. Okay. The Friday is the piece de resistance for this entire Pride Week. This is where the students, um, who have the student club called Gender Agenda, they run and operate the queer prom. So that's an after hours event from six till 9 PM on the Friday. And it's at the AMDC Sky Lounge on level three. 
and it's a ticketed event. And so for students, it's $15 and for staff members, it's $32. And I can definitely um, share the link with you guys so that people can book. But what that ticket gets you is um, some delicious food. Um, it's a non-alcoholic event. So, you know, some lovely mocktails and there'll be a DJ and there'll be photo ops and there'll be performers and, you know, lots of incredible revelry. And it's a personal highlight for me just to see those students really expressing themselves. But also it's a nice space for some of the staff members who, when they were students themselves, probably didn't have that opportunity to express their sexuality or their gender identity. That's a week. What a doozy. (laughs) Unbelievable. (laughs) Every day there's something that um, I want to attend. It's really awesome. So there's so much organization that goes into planning a week long. Yeah. And you're going to be emceeing. Good for you. (laughs) Step right out of your comfort zone. That'll be super fun. That'll be great. Wheeling out my old uh, qualification in communications and just uh, making sure that I dust off my degree that I got at Swim Men, funnily enough. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well done. So um, the next question we had is, what are you most looking forward to during the five week? But then, (laughs) no, there's just so much. I I don't don't know where to start. What are you looking forward to? Let's start with the morning tea. Yeah. I mean, I think the training will be really great and um, and it's a really great opportunity I, you know, I think that the, the thing that I reflect on, so I'm, um, going off and doing my own queer excellence during that week. Unfortunately, I'm on leave because I'm, uh, representing Australia in the ultimate frisbee world championships. Oh, uh, made over my, more that applause cool? inserted. Oh, oh, by the way, <laughs> I'm just, you know, representing Australia. Oh, no biggie. <laughs> that would be girl. Um, well, Max, congratulations. Um, thank that's you so fantastic. Thank you. Um, yeah, you're going to miss a, a big week. So um, I know I'm, I'm sad to miss it, but I think, you know, one of the things that I've certainly been reflecting on in terms of the theme that we selected is, you know, it's been a really exciting time with the Olympics and other big international, um, events to see like a number of queer athletes from across the spectrum succeed. Um, but also we've seen the barriers that people um, experience around gender and sexuality. You know, you yeah. start with all the coverage around um, that Algerian boxer who mm-hmm. has DSD um, mm-hmm. and just the the really horrible coverage um, and really just the exclusion, like the, the fact that what we've the seen, the misogyny and um, exclusion of women in sport and how um, women who don't fit typical feminine um, characteristics are discriminated against. It's, yeah. it's been fascinating to see. And I think it's a perfect example of why, you know, a theme like queer excellence is really important because it's not only about, it's a, we want to celebrate the successes. I think so often, unfortunately, our story is told through tragedy or, yeah. um, uh, you know, through, through that lens of um, exclusion or, or, and loss. Yeah. Yeah. But it is also important to, re- to reflect on those things that, you know, it's, it's, it's a miracle sometimes when, um, queer people continue to succeed in this world. And it's really yeah. incumbent on us to start to tackle those barriers and those misconceptions and all those things that, that stand in our way. So I think it's couldn't come at a better time from my perspective, um, mm-hmm. that we're having this, this opportunity to celebrate and to also examine queer excellence this, like this in this coming week. For sure. And, you know, just adding to that, I think um, it's really important for us to kind of look at in a very reflective mode um, and a discussive mode of how can we not just survive, but thrive as a community. You know, there's so much against us. All odds are against us. And yes, we do live in a very privileged um, country, but how can we as a Swinburne community who's very diverse and, and has a very large cohort of international students, how can we really, you know, cut through that, those odds and, and succeed despite everything that's set up to not enable us to thrive? Success while they're here, but also uh, when they have to. And after, home. when they have to go home. Yeah, yeah. it's really hard. That's a good point. point. Do you want to ask the next question? Yeah. So we, we talked a bit about how people can be involved, but I guess we're going to have some links on our, yeah. uh, our show notes, but also for Swinburne staff, there'll be lots of notifications by being engaged and, mm-hmm. and other eternal, um, like on course opportunities for people outside of Swinburne to yeah. 
or two. Definitely. Yeah. 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 If you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, for sure. So um, Ally Network has its own link tree, uh, which is kind of like a little mini website where we've got each of the daily events listed and the registration links as well. So, you know, everything on the Monday through Thursday is free to attend, but we do encourage people to book just so that we make sure that we have enough seats for everyone. Yeah. Um, and, you know, if it's online, just so that everyone has access to the um, link to log into the training. Um, and then on the Friday, it is a ticketed event. Um, and if you are not a Swinburne student, um, the price is $32. Uh, you will have to also join up Gender Agenda as an associate member. So I think that there's a small additional admin fee in that as well. You know, our alumni partners, um, as in industry partners, um, staff members, students, everyone's welcome. You know, even local Hawthorne community members can come if they want. Yeah. Well, we'll be promoting the podcast oh, no, nice and wide. So hopefully we get yeah, great more broadly. So hopefully we can get some more, um, attract some more interest for you as well. Yeah. Sorry, Max, I cut you off. No, you're all good. Um, yeah, I, I think it's going to be great to see it out there. And I think the biggest thing, you know, you can join the Allen Network. Just send us an email at our network at swin.eu.au. Um, but you know, I, I think these, weeks are such great opportunities to reflect, to learn more, to understand. Um, and I think the biggest thing that we will be coming to again and again during the week is really like what is an action that you can take yeah. to make a difference in, in, in the lives of yourself, in your own life and in the lives of others. You know, what is one thing that you can be doing or what lens that you can be applying? Um, and a lot of those things, you know, as we've sort of talked about this intersectionality point, you know, changing your practices to be more inclusive and considerate of marginalized groups, like it has a great effect or it should have a positive effect across just so many different marginalized groups. So, you know, using your pronouns has such a, can have such an impact and committing for a full, you know, year to introducing yourself with your pronouns, even pushing through when it feels uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. or, or un yep. I, I have had when I've used my pronouns in meetings, I've had people laugh, like, which is not like they're not trying to be mean or anything. They just have this, you have this instant reaction because it's like, what's that? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and it's a, it's a learning piece, you know, but it feels uncomfortable and hard sometimes because mm. you, you know, uh, you can push through with that. Um, and you can make a change in your, um, in your area. And, you know, I've had multiple people, who have come up to me privately and then said, thank you for doing that because it's made it easier for me yeah. in future meetings and scenarios. You know, is it, is it changing your email signature? Is it supporting queer businesses um, or queer led organizations? Is it going to more events in your social life that, um, you know, are inclusive or have, a, uh, you know, queer led or queer run? Um you know, just committing to more training or education or anything. Mm. You know, there are so many ways. Um, there's not a shortage of ideas that we can give you if you're looking for them. So um, I'm sure this week will be such a, Pride Week will be such a great opportunity for people to reflect and to understand. And mm. the the changes that you make will have a, a, a massive impact. And, you know, if we can get 100 individuals across the week all mm. making a change, that's the kind of thing that, you know, when we're coming back to Pride Week next week, sorry, next year, I should say, we'll be able to reflect. Oh, maybe we should do Pride Week every No, uh, Please. <laughs> no, don't. I need to sleep. <laughs> uh, but when we come back next year, we'll be able to reflect on the kind of change that we've seen. Um, and yeah. That allows us to build a platform um, for success for next year as well. Definitely. Just show that one small thing I changed after Ally Training was going back to my team and we talked about using non-gendered language mm. and we just reviewed all of our documentation, all of our training that we had for staff just to ensure that we hadn't used that. And at the moment I'm writing some policies yep. um, and, you know, trying to um, use some of the ones from the university and um, save as and, and make new versions. Yeah, just, you know, I've picked up a couple of times where we still have he, she, for example. Yeah. And so me being able to then say, hey, I need to let someone know about this mm -hmm. rather than just letting it go. So I think yeah, we talked about what can happen at, you know, with the executive group, 
or with senior leaders, but I think it's up to all of us as individuals where we can to either ask the question or to do something that's within your own power and to sure. influence a small, because all of those small changes, mm-hmm. they definitely do make a difference. It adds yeah. up. Yeah. yeah. Many hands make light work. Yeah. That's the right. amount of emails I've sent to the Herald Sun to try and get them to use spokesperson instead of <laughs> spokesman or spokeswoman oh when they God. speak to someone from my team. <laughs> but who knows? I'll, I'll wear them down eventually. I oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Keep Jeff, fighting the fight. Keep up the fight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that just about wraps up this special episode as we celebrate Pride Week. We can hope that everyone has a great time with all the events on campus or online. And we really we really appreciate this time that you've spent with us, um, Max and Steph. It's been a great chat. And um, I know I'm looking forward to some of the events coming up. Uh, yeah. Especially the March. I really do love that. Do you try, try and stay out of that photo at the end, but I will make a better effort this time. No, be in the photo, I will. please. I'll be, I'll be in the photo. And dress to impress. Okay. Okay, yes. I do like how colourful the week is. That is the other thing because I always wear black. Black, have I got it in black? Everything's in black. So I'll uh, definitely make a special effort. Um, and so let's make sure that we provide the information so that we know, so everyone will know how to be in contact not just this week, but mm. always, mm-hmm. um, and so that we can keep people up to date with what's happening with the network and yep. definitely how they could be involved in this week. So thank you both. Uh, but over to you, Christy. Yeah. Um, I just want to add that Swinburne's really lucky to have such advocates and leaders like yourself. So, and like you said, Max, earlier, Steph is a powerhouse. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so... Um, Thank you, guys, and I will look forward to seeing you next week. And uh, we hope that everyone enjoyed the discussion today and and get involved. And remember, you can listen to the Swinburne Professional Staff podcast on Apple Podcasts, Swinburne Commons, and the YouTube channel. Oh gosh, wherever else you can you can find your podcasts. <laughs> so, thanks so much, everyone, for your time today. It's so lovely to see you. Until next time, see you later. You can say bye if you want. Oh. Uh. <laughs> bye. Do it all. Do it all. For a wedding thing. Did you guys do an outtake section at the end? <laughs> we do now. <laughs> I'll stop recording now. <laughs> <laughs>